Folks at North Atlantic Marine Services always seem to have some kind of interesting boat project underway, and I never know what I'll find when I stop by their facility in Wareham, Massachusetts. This time around, co-owner John Bernier was stripping down a 30-foot center console from stem to stern, providing a great opportunity to review some points of inspection that many boaters overlook. Right, John, what we have here is a, uh, a mouse nest. You know, we're in the uh, process of replacing all of these plastic drains mm -hmm. and making them, uh, you know, replacing them with metallic. And once we opened up the boat, we found that we have an entire little nest. Oh, nice. <laughs> Which is disgusting, but yeah. always have protective gear on when you're dealing with stuff like this. It's one of the little surprises you'll find in your boat. Yes, uh, it is. And these little critters, not only can they uh, make a home inside here, but they can also eat away insulation of wiring, which then the moisture gets uh, into the wiring and you have major issues. Mm -hmm. Now, shrink wrapping obviously helps, uh, but will it eliminate the problem or they'll always find a way in there? Hopefully, uh, you know, if it's a nice tight shrink wrap job ventilated properly, that's a good way of keeping these little varmints out. But just uh, regular inspections, you know, is really what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by pulling off these panels and doing an inspection of the, the boat systems you have on board is always a good thing. Uh, what, what the recommended procedure is, you know, every year all these hatches should be opened up so you can do a, a fuel system inspection which now with the ethanol fuels, it's very important that we inspect our fuel lines, our tanks, and so on and so forth. So this is another part of the procedure where by just doing a simple inspection, you can actually find issues before they become big, big problems. Another item John inspects each season is the boat's fuel tank vent, which can become damaged without the owner's knowledge. Here basically is an open fuel tank vent that has been knocked off. There should be a flame arresting screen in all of our vents and that's part of your pre-season checklist because this is a source where we have hornets and wasps actually make their little home in the vents themselves. So this causes a lot of issues when you go to refuel your boat and it's blowing back fuel through the filler neck. The tank itself cannot breathe. As part of an inspection this here, having an open hole to the atmosphere, number one, you definitely have a, a lot of air exchange, which normally you would not. Also imagine if you're going through the water, every single wave you hit is going to put a little bit of water into your fuel, which of course is not good for your engine and it will uh, stall the engine at some point in time. Another thing that we see uh, often is if we have a hard rain, like we've had in the last few weeks here, water literally can drive itself into this. It acts like a little tiny funnel. So you might not think of it as a lot of water, but if you get in, you know, a half a pint of water every hard rain, and you get 10 or 15 hard rains, that could be a sufficient amount of water where your fuel filter, which we always should have an inline fuel filter, can't take out that much fuel, uh, I'm sorry, can't take out that much water from the fuel. So once it gets saturated, that water in fact goes right into your engine. So it's very important to do a fuel tank vent inspection as part of your spring commissioning. And speaking of inspections, when was the last time you thought to check your fuel cap gasket? Inside your fuel, these little O-rings should be inspected. And what we found is they either are very cracked and not supple at all, you know, or it's missing. You know, and this one here, you can see the erosion on this one here. This one here, you know, is, is ready to fail. But it, uh, have a nice watertight upper fill for your fuel system and they always have to be secured with the key. Mm -hmm. you know, Another potential problem spot neglected by boaters is the fuel tank, particularly the fittings and hoses. Uh, U.S. Coast Guard regulations require that there's an access panel so we can inspect our fuel system. What we're looking at, we're inspecting our tank itself, the condition of the tank. This sticker is supposed to be visible. That's a Coast Guard requirement. We're looking at these little valves. These are actually valves, not just fittings. This is an anti-siphon valve. In the event, you know, that a hose came off in the bilge area, this fuel tank will not just siphon into the bilge. You literally have to pull vacuum to open up this valve and then it'll allow fuel to pass through to the engine. And so we're also looking at the condition of the hoses. Mm -hmm. You know, and this hose right here, you can see where it's starting to tear apart. You know, there's pieces of the, you know, hose yeah. deteriorating. 
So this hose is no longer serviceable. It's just falling apart, mainly from you know the alcohol type fuels we have of today. Fuel tank sender. Mm -hmm. And I, I've already taken the screws out of it, but these are very specific screws. They actually have sealing washes built into them. So you cannot just put a regular machine screw or a conventional machine you know, type screw in there. Uh, they're especially made for fuel senders because we are dealing with gasoline. When we look at the sender itself, we're looking for corrosion. Here's actually the wires that go up to the gauge itself. In this particular example, in this particular case, this sender is no good. The fuel gauge does not work. So by removing the wires, by removing the screws, you know, we pull the sender out of the tank. And what's interesting with this particular one is the condition of the gasket that was literally keeping the fuel in the tank. You see how deformed, how corroded, how, how damaged that gasket is. Uh, that there again this would probably show signs of weeping gasoline upon a full fuel load next john turned his attention to the boat's plumbing valves which should be made of bronze or marillon well, yeah basically tom uh, this is your you know uh, commercial style home depot lowe's ball valve that's used you know in a boat there again anything that's underneath the water line you know cannot be made of plastic as we saw in the earlier shot, you know, we have a lot of under the water ball valves and fittings that uh, is just not compliant. It's not a to ABYC standards and it's not Coast Guard, Coast Guard uh, compliant. Mm -hmm. What we're doing in this particular project is removing all of the plastic fittings that are below the water line and replacing them, you know, with a metallic type fitting. What's the problem with, with the issue with using the plastic? When you use plastic, number one, they're very hard to turn once they get some age to them. So in the event we had a failure or a hose, you know, rupture or break, if it's four, five, six seasons old with salt water running through it, the chances of you being able to close this valve and stop that leak are very, very slim. There again, part of the uh, spring commissioning is to inspect and to check all of your valves to make sure they move. And uh, there again, that's part of routine inspection. So whether it's a uh, metallic valve or if it's above the water line plastic valve they should always be checked to make sure you can close them in the case of an emergency you know a lot of these hoses you know this particular one is in decent shape but some of the hoses i removed already from the underwater fittings once i kinked them like this they actually split you know and that's just from you know old age lack of inspection process you know and not having the, the proper hose for the job